Hello and welcome to Channel's Book Club. My name is Olakunle Kasumo and it's exciting to be on the show. Again, we just love to talk all things books on this show. Today is all about a special woman who served her country for many days. Decades, You know, there are a lot of patriots in this country that you and I, you know, either we've not had anything about of, or we have had just a little about. This is an amazing woman who served our country for many years. And after retirement, became a prolific author. Top on the list of our books is her autobiography that tells her story, but not just her story, tells the story of Nigeria in many, many ways because she was always in the thick of things. Now, I'm going to allow this report to tell her story and introduce her to you. Enjoy this. Madam Joan Toyosi Ayo, the first female chairman of the Federal Civil Service Commission. attributes this achievement to her background, one that inspired her passion for reading and writing, which was critical to her success as a public servant. My earliest record uh, lecture of my life as a primary school student was in 1945-46. My mother was busy in a private uh, nursing, uh, nursing home as a nurse. There was nobody to look after me, so my dad would take me along to school. For some time, I would sit down in his office. Later, I was allowed to sit at the back of 1C, primary 1C, in those days. And from there, I acquired literacy so early in life. So by the time I got to the mainstream education system, I could read and I could write. This and many more were captured in her insightful memoir titled Thesis, Antithesis, and Synthesis of Life. While emphasizing that she made up her mind at age 12 to study English at the university, Madame Toyosi speaks about her course of study also influenced her reading and writing skills. I read literature at the university. So I'm a literary person. I have read so many works of different writers over the years, over the centuries. So uh, being a literary mind, I automatically write as well. I did not acquire writing uh, somewhere along the line. It's been part of me because I made up my mind at the age of 12 to go to the university and read English. She further explains how she developed her reading skills. As a student of literature, of course, I've covered from Chaucer to the 21st century, being our textbooks all along the line. So uh, reading is more or less part of my profession because if I didn't read I would not pass my literature exams so I de develop reading both out of interest and out of occupational requirement but in these latter days what won't I have to read documents on economics on any subject related to whatever I'm submitting to government. Especially when I became senior special assistant to two Nigerian presidents, there was no document that would not be brought to us for appraisal. And you needed to read with full understanding of your subject. Even if it's not your subject, 
as a literary person, I must read and get out the details, summarize, and that's why it's good to study praise. When we were in primary school, secondary school, our teachers in those days uh, exposed us to writing praises. Praise is just what we call summary these days. So we will praise every document given to us, submit and put our own comments. So my reading has nothing to do with writing a book, writing uh, a play. It has been part of my occupational, occupational responsibility and mindset. Going down memory lane, Madame Joan Toyosi Aya explains how she rose to the level of a senior special assistant to two Nigerian presidents. After leaving the university, I taught for a while, and then I used to write in the dailies on topical issues. And some of my husband's friends reading my article said, you will do better to join the civil service, and then we can make use of your uh, literary uh, ability within the federal service. You can even be better hard than writing on the pages of the newspaper. And that's how I found myself one day a federal civil servant. Despite her passion for reading and writing, Madame John Toyosi Ayo discloses how she managed a major challenge that could have stopped her progress. I have poor, poor vision, which many people are not aware of. It started way back when I was in the primary school, and my parents used to apply uh, eye drops, given the limited knowledge of my medical condition then. And for many years, I was suffering under the pain. And the, the effect of my poor vision. As, in fact, I recall a, an incident when I was Deputy Secretary Minister of, in Minister of Commerce. I was sent on a course. Just within the first two days of my leaving, somebody in the account section was not aware of exactly when I was leaving. So he had thought that I was still around and he forged my signature. But in my absence, my family secretary looked at this and said, there's no way this woman can write as nicely as this. And this is not a signature, this is too regular. So, in effect, I've never had good handwriting. But as soon as I got to the level of having a confidential uh, secretary at the Federal Civil Service, I had a confidential secretary who could take minutes, you know, shorthand. I didn't know of my medical condition until my daughter became an ophthalmologist in later years, and that's how I realized that I have a macular degeneration. So how did she write four books despite a clumsy handwriting and poor eyesight? When I started writing this book, Thesis, Antithesis, and Synthesis of Life, which is my memoir, and that's about four years back, my son bought me four exercise books big ones. I was then in the U.S. I had finished my service years. And then you can see what my handwriting was like in writing them. I kept on writing and writing and I took inspiration from the same spot every day where I sat overlooking their garden, their beautiful garden. Each time I look out, the green vegetation with the moose, one big, one huge moose that was carved and put there. I just felt at home with nature and I kept on writing until 
before I knew it, I filled the four books with my writing. That was the first version of the book we are, I'm talking about. By the time I started the fourth version, I brought in my present secretary, Lati Ibrahim. He had worked briefly with me when I was in the private sector. And so uh, he too has had a spell of my clumsy handwriting. So it was between the fifth version and the sixteenth version that he worked in this very room with me. And of course, uh, most of what I did was just now dictating because there's a framework as he was reading the corrected, I mean, the new version, I was expanding it. I was expanding it with fresh information and of course, removing what I felt should not be there. And that's how I have come up with what I have here. By the time I finished the 12th version, I gave it out to my son-in-law, who first read through. He said he started at 10.30 a.m. and did not go to sleep or to bed until 3.30 a.m. It was based on his verdict that this book is so loaded, is so full of information, it has to be published. Mom, it has to be published. But after reading through, he to be uh, very well grounded in English language, uh, is a half caste, as they call them. He was able to correct all the misinformation. He removed some of the things that he felt should not be there. You know, he has the sensitivity of the modern day society. And he felt that way, well, this one should be there, this one should not be there. So I relied on his judgment. These four books here, are the most recent books that I wrote, which were launched on my 80th birthday. I'm showing you the program. And just to add in person, I had the privilege, the honor of having President Obasanjo and President Gulog Jinata as my special guest of honor, to mention few of the dignitaries who were there. The whole idea of these four books is to depict my life. The first one, effective usage of English as a second language. This is the sum total of a book that can be used for common entrance exam or what they call, yes, common entrance exam to secondary schools. It's a complete syllabus. The core of the book is thesis, antithesis, and synthesis of life, which is my memoir. It tells the story of my life from my earliest recollection to date. And then um, it has quite a lot of information for a corporate lady, a working mother, and you can see the foreword was written by President Elisheddin Obasanjo. It contains a lot of anthropological information, gender issue. It contains a lot of information 
on the public service. So, my early career, my memoir, arriving from this memoir and to complement it is this book. Extracts from the Technocast Diary. This is an offshoot of my memoir. I discovered that there has been so much put in this and yet I still have a lot to say. So this contain basically the framework, the guiding principles of the public service. And finally, like I said in my antithesis, standing on God's precious promises. This has been the foundation of my life. This has been what has made me to stand in spite of all odds. I've been able to anchor myself on the word of God. So this is a book that is distributed freely only to those who care to read it. career with decades at the highest levels of public service was always going to offer her unforgettable encounters and special memories. Most of these pictures are clearly put in my memoir. As you can see, I'm just opening the first page and the first photo that on these chapters. So here are my official photographs and they are reminiscent of my days in the Federal Civil Service, particularly the last 22 years of my service life in the presidency. President Toba Sonjo decorated me here as the officer of the Order of the Niger. And indeed, I have all of them in my books, as you can see. Here I am at a social function. One of my ministers, was his son was getting married and I was invited. So I had the privilege of seeing President Ibrahim Babangida and uh, Abdul Salam at the function. So I was introducing them to my son-in-law. Here is a unique picture that stands prominently among my experiences in the public service. The story is better told here. We took this with the President of North Korea. On a final note, one of her granddaughters reads an excerpt from Madame Toyosi Ayo's thesis, antithesis, and synthesis of life. Thesis antithesis and synthesis of life by Joan Olatoyasi Ayo, who happens to be my grandmother. I'm going to be reading an excerpt from the book. I read, the report was well received and after the usual presidential handshake, the then president looking in my direction, asked the minister, and who are these on this side? Are they staff or journalists? My minister replied, that is my SFA, sir. Recently deployed to my office, and the other two are her staff. Oh, the lady with the super memo? I can distinguish her memo from many others the president retorted. Yes, sir, my minister replied. Turning to me, the president asked, 
Madam, how did you feel about working as the only lady among these tough men? I did not work among them as a lady, sir. I worked among them as man in the generic sense. I curtsied as I answered. The president looked at me, gave me high commendation and walked away. Man in the generic sense. This terminology encapsulates my concept of a lady in a corporate world. I see myself as divinely created and completely equipped for maximum utilization of my God-given ability. I do not suffer from low self-esteem. Rather, I have confidence in my innate ability to discharge my duties within the scope of my endowed wisdom and skill sets. I am not intimidated by the chauvinistic attitude that puts some women on the defensive and promotes aggressiveness. Neither do I suffer from the weaker sex syndrome, which makes some women feel inferior to male colleagues or to suffer from low self-esteem. I do not seek cheap assistance, cheap attention, or cheap compliments from my male colleagues. I take every compliment with a pinch of salt. I am friendly but not familiar. I make sure I exclude myself from men's jokes, quote unquote, and do not dress to exaggerate any of my beauty spots, to deliberately attract undue attention. Finally, I am self-conscious not gender conscious. Essentially, this book highlights gender issues in our society. We live in a male-dominated society where women struggle to reach the pinnacle of their career. But my grandmother, Joan Olatoya C. Ayer, was able to reach the pinnacle of her career by becoming the first female chairman of the Federal Civil Service Commission. Thus, this book would inspire the girl child and other women to strive hard to even reach the top of their career ladder. I hope you loved that. Exciting, exciting story and so many stories like that. But it's amazing when um, such women, such individuals tell us the story of their lives. One of the problems we have in Africa and Nigeria is a lot of stories just go unnoticed or people just die with their stories, unfortunately. But it was amazing being there and to listen to her and to soak from her wisdom and her experiences. Now, for all of you out there who always send us messages, we are really, really happy. Always happy to read your messages and to give you feedback. I know we really need to work very hard in terms of uh, making sure that we return your messages. But the messages are so, 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 so many. But we try our best to return the messages and respond to your inquiries. And we will continue to do better. Please feel free to send us your messages, inquiries, questions, observations, even criticisms through any of our social media platforms displayed on your screen. My name is Ola Kunle Kasumo. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.